Okay, I would like to start uh, with a quick question. Who here is familiar with the raise of hand with how Kafka Message Broker works? Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, so, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Nathan Solnitsky, and I'm a back-end infrastructure developer at Wix.com. And I'm part of the team that builds libraries and all kinds of tools uh, on top of the Kafka Message Broker. And we've recently started incorporating exactly once delivery into our system. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to share how exactly does Kafka implement exactly once delivery and why is it so difficult. So at Wix, we of course have a distributed system comprising roughly 1400 microservices. And a lot of the flows include the event-driven uh, style for instance, when you do site editing or uh, publishing, as Wix is a website building platform. And we do it, uh, like I said, using Kafka. And we have over, over 850 million messages every day. Now, I wanted to explain the difficulty without doing exactly once using uh, the, a classic e-commerce flow. And one, one reason is that Wix uh, has, of course, uh, e-commerce websites, but the other one is that e-commerce is a very familiar uh, way for the audience to understand uh, these concepts. So let's say we have a uh, purchase completed the notification for our service, and then we want to update the inventory to reflect uh, that the items that were in the order need to be reduced in number. And we're dealing with some legacy API where you can only update one item at a time. Okay, so we go through all the items in the inventory, in the order, sorry, and then we want to update them. But doing all of this exactly once can be quite difficult. I mean, we could uh, need to deal here with some failure and some uh, errors and, and restarts and retries. And then we can get to a situation where, okay, let's say we managed the first item and reduce the number, and then we go through the second item, reduce the number, but then something blows up and we start over retry. Then we can potentially get to a state where the inventory has completely incorrect uh, information. So how do we solve that? So you can uh, maybe use some database and handle the diversion updates, uh, sorry, using some versions to, to manage these updates of the inventory, and to do some optimistic clocking with the database, something like that. So that's a lot of management and boilerplate that you will need to do on the application level. But I think using Kafka and the exactly one semantics that Kafka offers can be a better approach, and we'll see a little bit more about this uh, with this talk. So achieving exactly one's delivery in distributed sy systems is really not easy. First of all, the message delivery over the network is unreliable. We can mitigate this issue a little bit by introducing a message broker. And then once the message is produced and put inside the broker, we at least know that it will not be lost anymore. And we could have all kinds of issues with the consumers and producers. But at least we know the message is not lost and we can handle it. Now, I'll do a very quick uh, review of uh, how Kafka works, I know that most of you are familiar with it. So you send messages in Kafka over to specific topics, and these topics are divided into partitions. So partitions are basically append-only logs where you add new messages uh, at the end, and it's very high performance because you, mo usually you'll do that in memory and sequentially it's quite easy. And uh, then you read it sequentially as well. And you can scale up the sequential processing by just introducing more partitions. The more partitions you have, the higher degree of parallelism and scale. So of course, we see here an example of a Kafka producer producing new messages at the very end. And then the Kafka consumer reads messages sequentially, like I said. And once it's done processing some message, it will commit uh, the message to the partition. and if there's some problem, some restart or rebalancing of the partitions among the consumers, then we pick off where we left the first message that is 
uncommitted. In this case, uh, message with offset three. Okay, like I said, very short overview of how Kafka works with the messages run over partitions. Now let's look at which options we have for message delivery. So we have three basic options, at least once delivery, at most once, and exactly once. If we look at the at least once, that means for the Kafka producer that we'll retry on every failure because we don't want to get to a situation where we miss some uh, message, right? If, a site, if you want to notify the site was created, you really don't want to miss that uh, notification. So if there's some problem with acknowledgement from the Kafka broker, then we just uh, retry, and we can end up with duplicate messages on the partition. Now, over on the consumer side, we will, and if you want to do at least once, we will process the message before we commit it back to the partition. Now, of course, if there's some issue here, then we can end up with double or multiple processes because once we start up again, we will always go with the first uncommitted message. Now, with at most once, with the consumer, it's the flip side. We first commit the message and only then do the processing. So this will be helpful for scenarios where you don't care if some messages are dropped and lost. You can think about the situation with you're sending users some um, text message reminders uh, about something, and you really don't want to annoy them. You don't want them to get duplicate messages for nothing. And if once in a while they don't get a reminder, it's not a big deal. So here, if we retry, it means that if we start over, we will start from the next message. So no double processing of the same message, but you can get to message lost. But Classically, what we really want to achieve without all this mess, exa exactly once, right? We want to process these messages exactly once by the consumer. We don't want to worry about it. But we live in a real world with uh, the cap theorem and everything else, and it's really hard to achieve. Actually, in theory, it's probably impossible to, to achieve. There's the famous thought experiment called two generals problem where we have two generals, in this case Alice and Bob, who are trying to coordinate an attack over when between them there's the enemy in the middle. So let's see, they want to coordinate an attack uh, on when to attack this enemy. So Alice is sending a messenger over with the time of the attack over to Bob. But unfortunately, the enemy intercepted the messenger. And Alice didn't receive any acknowledgement. Okay, and Alice will send another messenger and let's say even that this time Bob received this messenger and he agrees for the time of the attack and he sends his own acknowledgement messenger. And let's say this time even Alice received this uh, messenger with acknowledgement, but we have a problem here, right? How does Bob know that Alice received the acknowledgement? Okay, maybe you will have Alice send an acknowledgement messenger that she got the acknowledgement. But if you think about it, we kind of end up here with some endless loop and catch-22, where we can never have Alice and Bob actually agreeing for the time of the attack and knowing that both sides know about it. So you can think about this in the terms of microservices, right? We have Alice service and Bob service, and Alice is trying to send a message over to Bob service, but we have the enemy in the middle, which could be network failures, some hardware failure, maybe even the Kafka message broker is down at the moment. So we cannot guarantee that the message is actually delivered and acknowledged one time, exactly once. So is exactly once actually impossible? Kafka does offer some solution for the problem, and, and let's look at exactly how they do that. So we have this classic uh, message passing uh, flow here. We start off with some HTTP endpoint, and we get some request. We put it through the message uh, producer and put this in uh, topic A. Then in the middle, we have uh, both a consumer and a producer. So it's, let's call it a processor. And the, this processor will read the message from topic A, do some processing, and put it into topic B. 
then we have the consumer at the very end that will need to see the processed message and will do some side effect uh, outside of Kafka, let's say writing to database. And let's call it the, this consumer an observer. Okay, so we have this flow and we want to introduce exactly one semantics here. So let's start with the Kafka producer. How can we make sure that it only produces one message at a time? Well, this is actually quite simple. We, Kafka has the up possibility to introduce an idempotent producer. Idempotency means that no matter how many times we retry, we never change the state of the system. So you just turn on idempotence here, and it will automatically attach an offset, an index to the message. And then if uh, the Kafka broker notices that the producer for some reason in sending the message again with the same offset, it knows that it's a duplicate and it will discard this message. Okay, pretty simple. Things get a little bit more complicated for the remainder of the flow. We have the processor in the middle and then the observer at the, the end. Here what Kafka tries to do is introduce a transaction between them in the sense that only once the transaction is completed, the observer will actually witness the messages and start consuming them. So let's see how does that work. So you introduce an offset in a similar fashion to the idempotent producer for each message. And also you have markers to when the transaction begins, ends, and in the middle, etc. So what does the processor need to do? We'll start by polling the consumer, reading the message. We begin the transaction. We're marking that transaction has and has begun. We're sending the message over to topic B. And then we send the offset as well. So we know that it's not a duplicate. And also importantly, we commit the transaction. So only now the observer can actually read message C. Now, let's say what we had some issue before and maybe the messages were sent, but the, um, but the offsets were failed. It was a failure sending the offsets. Okay, and maybe the processor needed to restart, you know? It happens. So in this situation, the processor will wake up and understand that there was a transaction going on in the middle, but it didn't finish. Okay, so you can just cancel it and start all over again. And all this time, the observer haven't yet seen message C. And we're good. That was a very uh, high-level uh, explanation of how this works. A very important uh, note here to make is that there is performance overhead for using exactly once in Kafka. You have more management and accounting to do for these transactions. So you may decide to amortize this cost and add more messages to each tran transaction. Once you do that, you may end up with a problem because you can remember that only once all the messages in the transaction arrive successfully, can you start reading them. So you may introduce a latency here. So as a user of this ability with Kafka, you have to fine tune the amount of messages you put into each transaction. And it's important to also note that there is no end-to-end -end guarantee for exactly once delivery here, right? We have the HTTP endpoint. Kafka doesn't know about that. Maybe there'll be some duplicate requests here. You need to handle that on the application level. Kafka won't help you there. And also with the side effect at the end of this process, you want to write to database and you need to make sure the updates are idempotent with yourself in a database with some locking mechanism because Kafka doesn't know about that. It can't guarantee anything with the, with the DB failures. And in reality, all th this that I've explained is much more complex, of course, than a few slides. There's, uh, in the short time we have, there's two-phase commit, the transaction coordinator, and there's a transaction log that keeps track of where we are with the transaction. So if the service restarts, it knows if it maybe need to abort the transaction. And also there's an interesting case where the, tr the service instance suddenly gets stuck. So we decide to spin up a new service instance. And then we have some zombie state with the original service that it decides to wake up and we don't want to have double processing of the messages, right? So Kafka handles that as well and introduces epochs and transactional IDs in order to fence against these zombies. 
So a lot of things are going on behind the scenes. One caveat I want to mention here is that in terms of resource utilization, there's some issue here with you want to, of course, work with transaction as many partitions as, as, you, as you can, but with the exactly once, you will need to have one producer for each of these partitions. So the scaling um, is not that great with exactly once at the moment, but Confluent, the company behind Kafka, are working on solving this and hopefully will be pretty soon available. Okay, so let's look back at the e-commerce flow uh, we saw in the beginning. Now we can use the Kafka exactly once uh, semantics and just put all of these inventory updates in the same Kafka transaction. And it doesn't matter if you put these messages in different partitions or different topics even, all of them are part of the same transaction. And then the, ser the service at the end will only start handling this transaction once all of these requests uh, come to it. But of course, you will still need to do uh, deduplication on the DB side of things because that's out of Kafka scope. So to summarize, exactly once delivery is like the holy grail of message delivery over the network. It's a tough nut to crack. It's complex to implement. And it's a bit complex to use like I showed you. And it requires fine tuning to get the performance right. And it's crucial for achieving atomic actions in distributed systems on the infrastructure level and not let the application developers get bogged down in all of these details with the messages passing through your system. So thank you very much. If you want to check out uh, in more detail the way Kafka has implemented exactly once, you have all these links and resources, and I put them out on SlideShare with this link so uh, you can check out all these resources. You can also follow me on Medium and Twitter to know all about uh, what Fix Wix is doing with the Kafka and data streaming and the cool libraries and tools you want to open source. So thank you very much. And uh, if you have more questions, you can see me later. And uh, let's move on to the great uh, next speaker.